in this lesson, I'll be sharing with you some of the guidelines that I use when I'm selecting photos for my slide backgrounds, especially if I'm trying to layer text on top of them. So using photos in our slide backgrounds is a great way to tie into a grander theme of our presentation. For example, if I'm talking about ocean health, I would love to use several photos of water textures and ocean landscapes to tie back to that theme and really reinforce my message. So I have three rules that I like to follow when I'm choosing photos for my slide backgrounds. And the first one is that I look for low contrast, photos that are low in contrast. So high contrast photos are great because they catch your audience's eye, but they have a lot of dark tones and bright tones at the same time, which makes it really hard for either white or black text to sit on top of them and be clearly red. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. This is a beautiful photo of a forest and there's this light streaming in from the background. And what's unfortunate about this is that I can't read the key message that's sitting on top of it. A better photo to use for a situation like this is something that's dark and has less contrast so that white text really pops on top of that photo. You're losing some of the vibrancy, but the trade-off here is that your audience is resonating with your message. So the first rule, choose a photo that's low in contrast. The second rule that I like to follow is to choose a photo that's either mostly dark or mostly light, but not somewhere in between. I like to avoid the mid-tones or the grays. So let me show you an example of what a mid-tone looks like. Maybe I'm giving a talk about sustainable resources and construction and I want to use wood textures. This particular wood texture is really beautiful, but it's not really dark and it's not really light. So the white text on top of this photo is really hard to read. It might just look like a blur to the audience in the back of the room. A better choice would be to use a photo like this that has a really rich dark texture. There's also not a lot of contrast here, as you can tell. So that makes the white text really pop on top of this photo, which is great. Or on the flip side, you can use a mostly light texture like this, which makes the black text on top really stand out. So there's enough contrast for your audience to read your message here. So that's the second rule. Choose photos that are mostly dark or mostly light, but not in between. Finally, the third rule that I like to follow is to find a photo that has a lot of negative space. And what exactly is negative space? In design, it's just a fancy term for the empty space in a composition or a photo. So here's a great example of what negative space looks like. I have a beautiful dramatic shot of a bridge here and the sky becomes the negative space of this composition. It's a perfect container for text or a key message. Another example of that is this photo of a workspace. The wall becomes the negative space where I can put my key message. So those are the three roles. I look for photos that are low in contrast, that are mostly dark or mostly light, and photos that have plenty of negative space to play around with. So you might be thinking to yourself, where can I find these photos? And what I've done for you is collected a list of royalty-free and free photo resources where you can download photos that you don't have to worry about paying for and you don't have to worry about copyrights either. So don't forget to download the exercise file at the end of this lesson. It will be a great resource to you in the future. Thanks so much for listening. I hope to see you in the next collection.